homophobia can be found almost anywhere and comes in many forms. Saying something like, that's so gay, is one of the many forms. I hear that too often and I always think, really, of all the words in the English language, and you choose gay? I can't just walk up and say, hey, you're a homophobic idiot, or even explain to them that what they said was wrong. Now, if you have the guts to do this, then good luck, but it probably won't change anything. The thing with humans is that we don't change unless we want to. But if you try to find ways to educate people, then maybe we can spark some sort of change to homophobes. Let's get started with the basics. There are three main orientations, gender, sexual, and romantic. Gender is fairly easy to define, it's who we identify as. What stumps some people are the actual orientations. There is cisgender, which most people are. It means that you conform to the gender assigned to you at birth, whether it's boy or girl. There is agender, which means a person's gender doesn't align with man, woman, or any other gender. They tend to use they, them pronoun. There is transgender, which means your gender identity differs from the gender assigned at birth. There is bigender, which means that you identify as both male and female. There is pangender, which means you identify as all genders at once. There is also polygender. Polygender just means someone defines as multiple genders. So not all genders, but there are some genders that they do define themselves as. It's almost kind of like, not literally a pick and choose, you don't like choose your gender. But you know, somebody could, who's polygender could identify as partially female, partially male, partially some other gender. If you don't know what pronouns someone uses, just ask them no matter how weird or stupid you think it is. This brings us to sexual orientation, which is what gender someone is sexually attracted to. There is heterosexual and homosexual, which at this point, everyone knows what they are. Bisexual is another, which means that you are attracted to both guys and girls. There is pansexual, it means that you are attracted to all genders. There is also asexual, which means you don't experience sexual attraction. Asexual is considered to be a part of a spectrum called the asexual spectrum. This is a spectrum between sexual and asexual, with demisexual and gray asexual in between. Demisexual is what you would call yourself if you only experience sexual attraction after an emotional bond is formed, if even then. Gray asexual, or gray ace, is when you don't normally experience sexual attraction, but sometimes do. I think for me, like, there's a lot of different ways that people can define asexuality. Uh, you know, attracted to no genders or strictly like just not experiencing sexual attraction. I'd be the latter. Like, I just, I don't experience sexual attraction. I don't like, you know, in quite an embarrassing way. It's like when you see a shirtless person on screen and you know, like super hot or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't really get it. I'm just like, that person's a really good actor. No, I don't really think about somebody's body like that. You know, that's not something. That I sit around and daydream about. I'm more, I think more about the romance or the meaning behind something, not just the outer layer of it. Finally, we have romantic orientation, which is commonly confused with sexual orientation. Romantic orientation is what gender someone is romantically attracted to. Romantic orientations are similar to sexual orientations, but are categorized as romantic attractions. Some romantic orientations are heteromantic, homoromantic, biromantic, and panromantic. There is also a aromantic spectrum. Aromantics don't experience romantic attraction. Like the asexual spectrum, there is demiromantic and gray romantic. There is a term called questioning, which is what someone goes through when they think they need to change one or more of their orientations. This is an incredibly stressful and confusing time for a person that can take years to make a discovery. When I first discovered I was bi, I had this feeling of like relief and it really took like this weight off my shoulders because I was questioning myself for like a really long time and I kept like denying it. I didn't think much of it. I mean, it was kind of a scary thought just because, you know, like why me? But I was never scared of it or I was never, you know, I didn't really question it that much, it was just, I knew it. If someone comes out to you that they are in questioning, just be as supportive as you can and don't make fun of them. Again, this is an incredibly stressful and confusing thing to go through. Another important term to know is coming out of the closet. This is when someone tells people or their family about them changing one of their orientations. Like questioning, this is something that is stressful and scary to do. 
When I first suggested to my family that I might be bi, they were they were a little surprised, but they were, you know, they were pretty supportive. And I remember the first time, it was when I was like still really unsure about everything. I remember I was in the car with my mom and I was like, hmm, I think I might be gay. She like, she like looked at me and just like stopped the car and I was like, but I don't know. But like, she wasn't homophobic about it, but like, she was just really shocked because like, I just never like, I never really talked about girls. I have not yet come out to my family. I've come very close, but not yet. And um, actually, I think they're starting to kind of, you know, suspect. Furious about coming out to my family would be disapproval and disappointment. Because I know in most of my family, they, they don't care. I mean, it's just, you know, they'll work with gay people. Like, it's fine. But there's definitely some cultural aspect to that. It's not OK. If someone comes out to you, support them and be happy that they made the hard decision to come out. One of the reasons why coming out is so scary is because of homophobia. If a high school gay person were to be openly gay, they would have an increased risk of getting bullied, and in most cases, they are. Homophobia is a huge problem in America. Please note that I am using homophobia as an umbrella term because there are so many phobias directed towards the LGBT plus community. The thing with homophobes is that they are so full of hate, they do things like this. So I've never directly experienced homophobia towards me, but of course I've seen like comments on Facebook online, and a lot of times it's a joke, but then obviously there are people who are really um, against homosexuality. It's not just the hate outside the community. There is also some hate for asexuals inside the community. For me, I am heteroromantic asexual. So a lot of people in the community, like a lot of people in the community just flat out don't believe asexuals are real anyways. But there's also a lot of people who don't believe like heteroromantic asexuals belong as well. And I can understand that, but it's, a bit scary, especially like as a female, when you're asexual and female, there's a lot of risk that comes with that because people would be like, yeah, asexuality isn't real, you just haven't found the right man, or you know, how can you be doing that? You're taking away children from your future and like ruining your family, you know, things about that nature. So in the community, I've mostly found like very accepting people, but because I am asexual, some other people don't believe I even exist or that my like emotions and like thoughts in the matter are even valid. So it's a bit creepy and scary when people are convinced like sexual urges are a primal part of a human being because when they say that they're saying I'm not human. It's honestly crazy how there is so much hate for the community and then some members of the community are hateful towards asexuals. Thankfully, society has made some improvements with tolerance. I feel like society is changing in a way so that it's a lot more acceptable to um, just be LGBT. And we've definitely come a long way from historically about acceptance towards LGBT people. I think social media actually has a big impact on people becoming more accepting of LGBT identities, especially since it's a place where like most people can feel safe, like expressing themselves and educating others. But society still needs to do some improving. So as far as tolerance goes, I think society can still but we still need to focus on certain cultures, like Hispanic culture, it's very manly. So when you think about LGBT people, it's seen as less manly. So definitely culturally, it should hopefully change. But as a society as a whole, I mean, just being more open towards the idea of, you know, these people are all around me. So, you know, I have to deal with them and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be mean to them or anything like that. If you are in questioning, think about going into questioning are closeted and trying to come out. Just know that it's okay. Don't let all this hate discourage you. To someone who's questioning, I would say that it's okay, you know, to explore or to see, because I mean, it's your life. You know, it doesn't matter to anyone else who you are. So personally, you just have to know. Understand that it's okay to change labels. Like if you think that asexuality or any sort of orientation, you feel like a label fits you, like, it's okay to find out later that that label doesn't. 
You know, it's not some sort of sin, you're not faking it, you're just discovering who you are. I mean, that's a natural part of any person who's like questioning or curious. Don't feel pressured to come out. I mean, that's, that's a really big thing. Like, I think everyone should come out eventually, but if you truly do not feel safe, then don't feel like you have to. If you go into questioning and you discover something about you, that's great. Shout it from the rooftops. Don't let the haters tell you otherwise. Only you can decide who you are. If you go into questioning and you don't discover anything, that's still great. You know who you are and that's okay. Whether you're LGBT or not, you are valid no matter what.